well, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it because um, we had a we had a guest here. Um, I don't know a few months back, a few months ago, a neuroscientist. Mm. Uh, his name is Professor Dr. Ranko Rajovic. And uh, he's uh, specialized in um, developing development mm. of the children, mm. yeah, development mm. of children. And uh, he 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 said that, for example, if you have uh, one uh, baby tooth uh, taken out because of yeah. I don't know some you know because be, because be, of decay or because of decay or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one baby tooth. Uh, Pulled out. I'm gonna butcher this, but I'm gonna try. Fine, give, fine, I'm gonna try fine. my best. Uh, can, uh, give me that. So, so you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna develop a habit of chewing on the stronger side where you have all the teeth, which yeah. which is gonna give you some asymmetry. Yeah. But well, you putting that aside, uh, like you're gonna have because this mandibula, right, the 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 lower jaw is the strongest one. Uh, the way I I just I forgot how he mentioned it, but it's something going to happen with the with the way you chew food, with the way you develop your your uh, neck muscles, which are going to influence well, the, the po- posture and development of the spine, yeah. which can end up in scoliosis. Yeah, but they've done this with rats. You know, you, they build a block on And we got a lot of heat for that, for that segment. Well, fine, but you've done it with rats. You know, what they do is they build a, a big piece of a, a, a filling material. They put it on one side of the mouth, between the teeth, so they become asymmetric in their biting pattern. And you get distorted craniofacial structure, you get distorted upper spinal structure. You're done. Done. Science. Thank you very much. Don't yeah. give me a hassle. Look at the science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what but, but what often happens, actually, just to li- give a little <laughs> detail on that, in the period of time before they lose the tooth, often the tooth is painful to bite on. So you get a near appropriate response yeah. where they just don't want to chew on one side of the mouth. They favor another side. And of course, you've overlaid on the fact, you know. This we all, we've all been there. We've yeah, all yeah, yeah. been there. Well, yeah. yeah, but then overlaid on top of this is this tendency for the face to be downswinging. Yeah. So, you know, this is, I mean, it's a really sensitive subject here because what I'm talking about is your face. Yeah. yeah? You know, that image you look, you know, what looks back at you from any mirror in the world. If I look at your ID, which bit do I look at? The color of your eyes, your height? No, I look at a photo. That, that, in many ways, that is you. And I'm saying it, it's morphing, it's plastic, it's changing. Um, worse, again, if I say your child's face is not growing properly, and to some reason, it's your fault. Yeah. You know, it's a really difficult message. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize in advance for everything I'm saying. Yeah. All I want to do is I want to find answers because my goal here is to make people <coughs> healthy. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I'm going to make people healthy, then we need to understand the topic. But what I really want is prevention because I really want to prevent these things. So let me. I just want to finish off the other, the, the third thing. I, mean, I talked about the strength of the muscles. I talked about the oral posture, and the, the third thing is you know things like breastfeeding, prolonged breastfeeding. I think I like the. Have you heard of the baby led weaning, where no. we introduce? So, the idea with baby led weaning is that there was a distinct lack of food processors a couple of thousand years ago. You know, if you were 10,000 years ago and you wanted to blend your food in a food processor and give it to your child through a straw, you were going to have problems. <laughs> now, parents did do a little bit of pre-chewing, but I think that there would be a limited, they would have limited time to pre-food, pre-chew everything before they gave it their child. Mm. So you had this long crossover period. I mean, breastfeeding, we think, went for about two to three years. But babies would probably start putting things in their mouths at about six to nine months. I mean, every child, if if anyone's ever had a child, you know, they pick things up and start putting them in their mouths. Now, the human, we, I don't think there's been really any significant genetic evolution in the last 10,000 years. I mean, we've had a glucose tolerance. We've had um, alcohol dehydrogenase. Great. And we, we, see, we can see that in the picture. And, you know, we've had some, the, 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 the transfer of um, sickle cell anemia because that okay, was beneficial yeah. with... Um, malaria. Malaria. And so we've seen those, but those are fairly minor. I mean, we've not got an extra finger on our hands. Yeah, not got that would be teeth. major. Yeah, that, that would be fair. <laughs> that would be structurally major. You know, the fact that we've evolved out of having wisdom teeth. I mean, if you think we're losing wisdom teeth because of some environmental change, you don't understand evolution. Yeah. You know, if you make that statement, please go back, have a little look, and understand what evolution was about. Because you are wrong. Mm. We have not evolved 
not to need wisdom teeth. That is just that, that's bastardization. That that's using ever anyway. I, I won't go into it. It just annoys me that because you know we're, we're covering up what such an important story. Here. Okay, so what we think was happening was um, children would be given um, sort of sticks of, of tough meat. We think, you know, the hunter-gatherer era, you know, these really important calories were coming from meat. And when you made a kill, you would clearly probably have up some raw meat at the time. But then if you weren't going to make a kill again for several months, possibly, you would as quickly as possible dry all the meat and... If you didn't have a kill for several months, then by the time you got the next kill, you were eating little bits of leather. I mean, I met two separate anthropologists. Both of them told me stories of being literally almost unable to eat a single mouthful of food offered to them by um, some of the indigenous peoples they, they were studying and working with because they just couldn't do it. You know, they were given this strip of meat well it was assumed it was meat it looked like leather and this dried meat just, yeah. yeah you know this is this is something like you, you, like beef jerky like, <laughs> like beef jerky but you know they, these guys don't have a you know a, a machine that you know does it perfectly yeah. you know they've just hung it up you just you, have to yeah. chew it and and you know you, you chew it and these I said, one of his anthropologists said to me you know he couldn't take a, he couldn't take a bite out of this thing and he watched this guy just, he, just he, slice it just just sat there in between conversation just slice 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 Slice, slice, ripping through this has stuff. That, has the, anyone the, measured the power. the power of the bite? Uh, yeah, um, it would be Dan interesting Lieberman, to see. Dan Lieberman did do some good work on this. Actually, you know, Dan Lieberman's got some great stuff to say. I think that I, I would love to engage with him on some of those subjects because um, we share so much. You know, I have talked. So, what is what would be the difference between average? I don't know, European uh, bite strength against I don't know some indigenous people. Oh, I, I hate to think. I mean, we've got, I did, I did, we're going up 220, maybe the low 300 kilograms between your back teeth. And that's a big bite, you know, yeah. well over your body weight often. Um, it would be interesting. Yeah. Fast, but I think also it's, it's, it was the lateral forces these guys could put on. Because, you know, not just the masseters and the um, temporal muscles. But, but also the lateral, grinding. Yeah, you've got your lateral pterygoids in there. And I mean, you know, I had a discussion with someone recently about, you know, the fact that people in the Western Outer Hebrides, where interestingly I had I'd worked, were um, eating a lot of porridge or, you know, people in South Africa eating a lot of mealy mealy. And I think when, when otherwise other conditions were very good, a lot of these... Um, um, ancient foods, they didn't appear to be so tough. But often, even when you're looking at these porridgey things, the last millimeter or two of biting, you've got quite grainy, granular s stuff that you need to process in this like millstone action. And a lot of lateral grinding motion would have had to go yeah. on to, to process this stuff down. But of course, you didn't have any of those easy calories. You know, I, I go back to that. So um, you would you would have to do this all day long. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, you didn't have those the cafe mocha. You know, you you yeah. you, you have that white cafe mocha. I, I I checked this out at Starbucks. <laughs> I think it was 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 way I can't what was the three hundred and forty calories crumbs. That's a lot of calories you're getting on board. If you're going to take those calories on board, either you will eat less, or you're going to get overweight. Yeah. Now we, we can make comments on both of those. Yeah. But if you're going to eat less, then you're going to take less chewing. Yeah. Yeah. And so all those easy calories negates <laughs> a tough calorie. And I, you know, I have this thing called the mu index. Mm. The mu index is how hard it is to chew something versus how many calories you get from that substance. You know, that the classic we quote is celery. You know, apparently that you gain less calories back from eating celery than you expend chewing it. <laughs> so there we go. That's a great mu factor. Yeah. And also... Sugar. You, you, sugar is the lowest mu factor possible. Yeah, yeah. Processed, processed sugars. Yeah, yeah. We're, just, we're eating more and more processed foods. So, yeah. you know, again, I've got a good processing unit because I've used this processing unit. And you, you choose know? what you eat. And you chew what you eat. You chew and chew. <laughs> choose you, and chew. Choose and chew. Choose and chew. Yeah. Choose and chew. Choose and chew sounds like a catchphrase <laughs> for you know for some simple life rules. <laughs>